Lodgecasters, welcome to the Lodgecast, the official podcast of Gentleman'sAvenue.com. I'm your host, Mr. M. This is being recorded at the Lodge in Whittier, California. You're tuned in to episode six. We have a great episode ahead. We have a great interview, man. I mean, you want to stay tuned for it. We have Jimmy from Shiner Gold Pomade and we have Figaro's Barbershop all the way from Portugal. They're here. They're at the Lodge. They're going to come out a little bit later. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that interview. Today is April 23rd, 2017. You can find us on our website at gentlemansavenue.com forward slash the Lodgecast um, and on social media. And we are now on iTunes. Finally, finally, this week, we got the approval for iTunes. This episode sponsored by our house brand, Old Duck Grooming. In case you're not aware, shaving is the most traumatic thing you can do to your face. You are literally taking a layer of skin off your face during the process of shaving. So we've created an all-natural product, zero chemicals, zero toxins. The ingredients are of the highest quality. So we created this. We have two fragrances. One is a a fresh one that has a real bright, pepperminty uh, fragrance for you. We also did a trail uh, scent, which is kind of like an outdoorsy, woodsy type feel to it. And uh, both of these products are amazing. Like I said, they're the highest quality. There's no chemicals in these. This is great for your face. It not only uh, moisturizes your face during the process of shaving, it allows the razor to glide nice and smoothly. And it also uh, helps your, your face heal, your skin because your skin is being, you know, cut. So it it does all that. So anyways, make sure you check out our house brand, Old Duck Grooming. So this week's been a busy week. Uh, On Wednesday, we had uh, Masa from Japan, and we had Raka Hair from Kobe, Japan. What an awesome man. I had a great time. I mean, we we drank a few beers together. Uh, Afterwards, we we had some ceviche. It was cool to see that... um, uh, Hitoshi and his family had never had ceviche. Uh, Masa last year when he visited us, he had some ceviche. So that was just, you know, he, he loves ceviche. So it was really cool for us to be able to provide some ceviche. And then, he, you know, he always tells me we got to get a, a Mexican restaurant going in Japan. But, uh, you know, we had an awesome time and we just released this morning. I uh, remember, like I said, today's April 23rd, 2017. We just released the Echo Park Guitars episode. And, you know, it's just a real inspirational story. I really can't say how much I respect Gabriel for, you know, going through that journey, the journey of drug addiction and finding that redemption, because it's not just about living in, in hell, but it's surviving it and then making the choices to get out of that. I mean, it's just a great story. And I'm really happy for him and all his success working with Joe Perry from Aerosmith, uh, Jackson Brown and Troy Van Leeuwen from Queens of the Stone Age. I mean, the list goes on and on of A-listers. He is really being blessed, and I think it's because he's on the right track. He's living the good life now. He's uh, unfortunately leaving Los Angeles area. He's going out to Detroit. And, I mean, I just wish him the best of luck. Um, you know, he's, he's a good brother now, and I, I really just just admire the guy. So uh, that's been the week for us here, and uh, we have uh, the, the next few weeks, uh, or I should say the next few months for us, are already booked. So, you know, we, we will squeeze people in when we can. and. Um, you know, I'm just really blessed to have a great guy here, Jimmy from Shiner Gold Pomade. One thing about Jimmy, literally both of our, our, we both started around the same time, the same year, I think it was. And I reached out to him about his product and he's like, yeah, sure. I'll send you a sample. And I mean, it was just like, from that moment on, we hit it off. I mean, we became good friends. He's actually even come to my family events from Arizona and, uh, you know, we've, talk a lot. And I think it's just, it's very rare to find somebody in an industry that um, has a good reputation. You know, I mean, he's not scandalous. He's not an asshole. He's not burning people. He's not like pressuring barbershops, you know, take that product, the other comp- competitors off your shelf so you could put mine up and I'm not going to give you no freebies unless you do so, which I've heard it all. And I've, I know quite a few pomade company owners and I'm not saying all of them are jerks or assholes, but I'm just saying that, you know, it's awesome to meet somebody who's the real deal, Holyfield. I mean, just the legit person, you know, his handshake's good, his word is good, and he's never going to put you in an uncomfortable position, you know, for his own gain. And, um, you know, and I guess that's why these guys from, from Portugal are here. You know, he has them on tour. And, you know, they're, they're, they're going around. They were at Viva Las Vegas, and we'll talk more about that in depth. But it's, you know, 
when you, when you're when you're righteous and you're doing what you're supposed to do in the right way, you know things work out for you. So I'm really happy to have Jimmy here and and these folks from uh, Portugal. So without further ado, I'd like to be able to to bring them in, bring them onto the set and uh, introduce them to you guys. So if they could just come on set now, I'd appreciate it. They're coming to the lodge because this time they are actually waiting outside. I've decided that I'm better at the intros without, you know, a bunch of people staring at me. So anyways, they're coming in right now and uh, they'll get acclimated here in a minute and you folks will be able to meet them. Come on in. Come on in, Jimmy. Have a seat. Good morning. How's it going, my brother? Pretty Just get good, the, the headphones on and uh, we'll get started here. Hello, gentlemen. How you doing? All right. Nice <laughs> you. It's been a while since I've seen you, about 10 minutes. No. <laughs> Johnny. So we have, to my left over here, we have Jimmy the Man from Shiner Gold. This is... As I bet I was, you all thought I was better looking, huh? <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you're pretty handsome to me. <laughs> and we also have Johnny here from uh, Figaro's Barbershop yeah. in Portugal. And we have Damien. Right? Fabian. Fabian. Yeah. Yes? Fabio. Fabio. I'm sorry. See, you could correct me. I mean, we're... we're... It was Fernando a couple days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you gentlemen doing? Doing Good. great. Good. We've been running all over the place. Well, see, this is crazy because I don't know if Jimmy told you that he actually thought I was going to go to the event. Did he tell you that? That he thought we were going to do the interview there. Oh, he didn't realize oh, we were doing the interview here. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> and so yesterday we talked and I'm like, hey, so what time are you coming over? And he called me up like, what do you mean you're coming over? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't uh, realize that uh, we were doing it here. So you gentlemen are from Portugal, right? Yeah, yes. we are. And, and what part of Portugal exactly? Uh, we're from Lisbon. Uh, that's Lisbon. the capital. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice town by the sea. We got a river and the ocean nearby and lots of tourists these days. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a pretty getting, popular spot now? It is, it is. It's getting one of the most popular spots in Europe. Um, lots of tourists come there. And the population of Lisbon is also increasing. So. It is a pretty popular city right now in Europe. So is it like a small town still, or is it like a big city? Is it like urban, I mean, rural, or? It's it's urban, but it still has a lot of history in there. So you get to see a lot of the old architecture and cultural stuff. Um, so monuments, the castle, all kind of uh, old buildings. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting to see um, a lot of new shops also popping up and you know, it's it's a city that you need to be there to really enjoy the vibe and understand how things go, but it's pretty chilled. Mm -hmm. So you guys hooked up with Johnny, I mean, with uh, Jimmy here. How did you hook up with Jimmy? Well, we've been in touch with Jimmy for uh, over a year. Mm -hmm. We carry Shiner Gold back home. Mm -hmm. And um, we thought, I mean, if there's a pomade to do something cool in the States, that would definitely be Shiner Gold. Mm -hmm. um, and then, well, Jimmy just invited us over and say, guys, let's let's come to the States and do something fun mm -hmm. uh, over here, like visit some shops and yeah, show us Shiner Gold and you guys show your crafts around and we're gonna have a good time. So yeah, after one year of like messaging each other, we found some time and we say, hey, let's let's do it this this April. So we mm -hmm. came here. Um, we are doing pretty much four cities, uh, mm -hmm. three different states. So we've been to Arizona, Phoenix. We went to uh, Nevada, Las Vegas for Viva, and now we're California for uh, three more shows. So we were in San Diego this week. Today we got our show here in LA and next Sunday we will be in San Francisco. Mm. So mm. it's been it's been fun getting to know all these barbers and all these people in, in the US mm -hmm. uh, who love the, the culture of, of barbering. And to us, it's like the first time we're in the States uh, doing some barber related stuff, which is always a pleasure because, you know, we don't distinguish between 
holidays and work, it's always when it's barbering, it's always both, you know. It's so it's like a life, but it's a lifestyle. It's a right? lifestyle, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're coming here. We're not on holidays, but we're doing what we love. We're not working because we're not at our shop, but we're doing what we love, which is, you know, showing others the craft and hanging out with our buddies that you know work on pomade for hair and that's yeah that's that's china gold and that's jimmy here and you know all the shops that have been carrying this pomade and have welcomed us so far we've visited i don't know maybe more than 20 shops wow so i guess jimmy you have you have them pretty busy right these short legs move fast <laughs> <laughs> no it <laughs> Uh, Jimmy, so what, what made you think, what made you decide, you know, I want to do this tour, uh, bring these fellows over from Portugal and do this tour with them? I mean, what made you get into that? Well, they've been on my radar for quite some time, you know, mm -hmm. just following them on Instagram, seeing what they're doing. And, um, you know, from a business aspect of it, I wanted to attach myself to uh, the coolest shop I could attach myself to, mm -hmm. to help out the brand. And um, that's where the, the idea started. And um, then I started stalking them on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> <started>. <laughs> Which I, I, I believe he does. And, um, you know, we, we came up with a, a few ideas of things we could do. And um, it, it turned out to be, you know, really, really nice. Um, having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to keep everything fun. So we're doing some shows. We're uh, stopping off at shops. We're having good times. But uh, are you having fun, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure, for sure. For sure. Well, what, what's what's been the best experience for you so far? I mean, the well, one that you're just like for me. Oh, people are going to be talking me, about this for a while. Well, for me, it's the first time in the states, mm -hmm. so everything is new. And when you when you come from Europe, yeah, it's totally different. So it's a good time for sure. What, what what was the thing about pancakes? What's what's going on with that? Oh, Johnny Pancakes. <laughs> what, what what was the name of the? the they restaurant? went to the Pepper Mill uh, restaurant oh, okay. in Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah. When when you ask when you ask for pancakes, you imagine like pancake is something like this. Right? <laughs> He's holding up a, a coaster a bigger, in case. Yeah. at McDonald's. Yeah, a bit bigger, okay. <laughs> Normal pancake, but uh -huh. these guys, they got me like three big big pancakes. As big as your it. plate, right? Bigger as a plane, I don't know, I don't know. I think he just ate like half of one. <laughs> and yeah, it was it was enough because that half was the equivalent to ten pancakes of the normal ones. <laughs> Did he have so, syrup with it at least or anything, or is it just oh, plain? Yeah, like and a banana. kilo of bananas? And banana, yeah. yeah. Banana yeah. and syrup. <laughs> that sounds like a rock star life. <laughs> and uh, what about you, uh, Fabio? What, what's been the one experience you're just like, Man, this is just badass. Like, you know, um, I, I've been to the states a couple of times before, um, not not specifically for, you know, barbering and mm -hmm. barber stuff related. Always sneaking around in barber shops, but you know that's what I love to do. But this time, um, I mean, Jimmy asked us like, "You guys want to drive a Cadillac and get some cool footage when we go to Vegas?" So Jimmy has this 1954 Caddy mm -hmm. uh, stopped at his garage where, you know, probably drives it every once in a while. So he went pick us up at, from the airport with it and well, we fell in love with that car the first day. And he said, you guys got to drive this shit to Vegas. It's going to be the bomb. So, I mean, we're with our cameraman and like, all right, we're going to do it. But I never drove in the States and I'm not used to drive. Uh, <laughs> 70 year old car uh-huh so i i drove for like six hours or seven hours like and i mean i i'm still having dreams about me driving that car you know like it it was loose at the, the, like the steering wheel was loose but at the same time it was such an uh, adrenaline feeling and you know like driving in a new country crossing two states in an old car you know i think that was something not barber related but actually it has been the, An probably experience. the coolest experience yeah. and uh, we took some risks because you know it's it's kind of difficult to drive something you never drove <coughs> in a country where you never drove before mm -hmm. fortunately everything went well i mean 
We didn't crash. We're alive. <laughs> and Vegas well, even was, if you was even, great. So even if you would have crashed, I'm pretty sure that bumper is probably you know would have just demolished whatever you would have hit, right? Probably. I'm pretty sure that Cadillac bumper was big, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was the shiny gold van in front of us, so I didn't want to crash. With the shiny gold van. <laughs> what did he have the trailer, or was it just the? We were going to bring the trailer, but we were running a smidge late, so we just rolled the dice. <laughs> hey, we're going to Vegas, so time to gamble at home. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. from the get go. See, and Jimmy, um, you know, you talk about how you uh, Jimmy stalked you, and at, at least on social media, right? You know, uh, or Jimmy said that yeah. that he was stalking you guys, and Jimmy and I, we pretty much started around the same year. Yep. At least he had been formulating his product for years before, but he finally, I believe, went into the marketplace around the same tier, same time that I started my uh, Gentleman's Avenue, the website, and uh, I I reached out to Jimmy and I said, hey, you know what? I've never heard of this, and I think since then, you know, we developed a friendship. Uh, you know, we've he's even come to uh, uh, my child's baptism. You know, when he uh, came in from Arizona for that. And that was really cool. And, and you know, I I know a few guys in, in the pomade business, the owners, and not every, it's hard to find anybody that's, you know, a good person. And I don't mean like good person, like, you know, he dreams of unicorns, but, <laughs> but just somebody that you know is, if they say yes, and if they mean, they, they're not going to, they're out, they're not out to fuck you over. You know what I mean? And Jimmy's one of those guys. And I, I, you know, we've had a good relationship. We yeah. talk a lot. And I hope you guys, you know, your experience here, uh, that you guys continue to develop that because, you know, in this in, in this industry that you're in, and it's a profession, right? It's what you do. It's your life. Um, that you continue to encounter people like that because, unfortunately, a lot of people are just scandalous, man. Just they're pimps you know and I'm, absolutely I'm, i don't even absolutely, absolutely. Uh, i don't even mean to, to and, and not everybody yeah. but i would like to say you know i mean there were a couple of brands we could have done this as well and the reason why we did this with china gold i mean not only because we carry china gold it's because the approach that we got from china gold was very friendly and mm -hmm. it didn't seem to be you know like a suffocating business proposal to come over here you know we didn't talk business we talk about having a good time and you know business will come after mm -hmm. naturally you know things will flow uh, naturally and and I think so far that's what's been happening I mean we've we've had a couple of business ideas to do in the future uh, while some exciting projects we cannot disclose yet but it's it's in a pipeline to do it and I mean thank God we met so we can actually come up with these ideas and talk how, how we're going to do it but i think you're you're absolutely right about you know like pomade business owners not being as human as mm -hmm. well jimmy is it is true and i think that also it, it explains because jimmy is not only a, a pomade business owner i mean he's a mm -hmm. father is i mean he has brothers he has a family he has multiple friends from different backgrounds. His dad, is your dad still involved, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, yep. his dad. Family. Can't get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, when when you're surrounded by good people and you actually get to interact with different people and different background, I think you benefit a lot from that experience and when you meet new people at the business, mm -hmm. right? So I think so far, Jimmy has been someone that I don't, when I talk to him, I don't see him as a business owner, but I see him as a friend, the guy mm -hmm. that it's, okay, is, is using us to help him, but we are also, you know, happy to be part of this thing because we know he's a good guy and we know his pomade is good, so. He's gonna take care of you in the end. He's not gonna just leave you out to. No, and I know that, like, we're already talking about having him coming to Portugal for mm -hmm. holidays, you know, and we're not even talking about business. This is just, you know, out of friendship. And I want him to come over there, have a good time, uh, finally see our shop and meet all the barbers there. And, you know, just he hasn't been to Portugal yet. And Portugal isn't that close or isn't that far from from Spain, but it's very far from other countries in Europe. And Jimmy mm -hmm. has been to Europe many times. So the chances of him coming to Europe to come to Portugal 
Well, it would be reduced if he wouldn't know us because, I mean, there's nothing, there's not much to do out there if he doesn't know the right people unless he goes there as, he goes there as a tourist. Mm -hmm. And I think what we want is to take Jimmy on a real, like, you know, local adventure where he actually gets to see the real stuff. And hopefully we will be coming to the States more more times, you know, to do other stuff. So I think I think so far what I can say is that we don't have a business relationship with China Gold. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more of a friendship relationship. And that's that's what I think it's cool about this because the pressure does not lay on China Gold and does not lay on our side either. I mean, it lays on having a good time and making the best out of it. So, yeah, because here in the states, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how it is over there, but I, I here in the states, because I know plenty of barbers that, you know, sometimes the companies put pressure. They'll even, t you know, tell a barbershop owner, you know, if you don't give me that shelf right there, I will stop giving you, you know, free product or discounts. And and to me, that's I, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, who, you know, I mean, it's a business. I know at the end of the day. Jimmy's gonna make. Is, do you guys have that problem? Do you guys have that problem over there where you know they're they're, they're like trying to make you choose and be loyal? Oh, quote we, we we certainly do. I mean, we got like tons of offers, you know, like to try samples and get their product in our shop, where we don't even have to buy the product. We just pay them if we sell, and you know, like we got tons of these offers. Mm -hmm. But we're very selective in what we have at our shop. We work mainly with old school pomades. And a couple modern ones and shana gold is one of the pomades we carry we also like you know like the shaving soap and the beard balm mm -hmm. um i think you know it is it is surprisingly good for someone that is not a barber and has taken his time and patience to put effort into getting a formula uh, or several formulas that actually work and mm -hmm. are good are good products so I, I admire him for it, you know. I think it's it's someone very passionate about his business who finds time to do it and to do it right. And one, one difference I see from, from Shana Gold and other businesses is that I see Jimmy going personally to barbershops and, you know, hey, here's 100 cans of Shana Gold uh, Psycho Hold or here's mm -hmm. another 100 cans of this that you order me, you can pay me next month. I mean that creates such a you know a trust and and loyalty onto customers that you don't see that with other brands and he doesn't need to do it you know he can just ship them but you know he does it out of kindness and he does it out of the good relation he wants to keep with the barbers and i think these days that's something very rare mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's like sometimes it's like throwing a pearl to pigs and <laughs> most barbers won't get it. Are we saying that there's a brand that's a? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not but there's a brand that might use a pig, but um, um, I think in Spanish we call it manteca. Do you get, because uh, Portuguese I, Portuguese is very close to sp is Spanish, right? Is yeah. is is that word manteca the same? What's manteca mean in, in Portuguese? Does it mean anything? It doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. See, ours means lard. So, I, but anyways, that might be something else that people put in there. Um, so how did you become a barber? And how long have you been barbering? Well, I started barbering when I was 14, 15 years old. So that's been like 16 years now, 16, 17 years. Where were you cutting at? Was it cutting at a shop, cutting at your yeah, house? Yeah, I was or? cutting home, you know, I was cutting home, just my homies, family, friends. I started, you know, just trying out and I like going to the barber shops with my mm -hmm. dad ever since I was a kid. I loved like, you know, being around the barbers and just going there because it smelled so nice. And I, I could see like men getting out of there with a different energy and a different, mm -hmm. a different kind of vibe. And I thought that was like something where I felt comfortable being at. So, I mean, I went to school, did all my studies and I even graduated law, but you, what you, wait a minute, you, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. you could be a lawyer. I could if I want. I mean, I've I've worked in, at corporations as me and what? Johnny dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, okay, legally, I said something about lard. Is that am I getting in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't care anymore. Oh no, that's from that's from a different country from where at uh, Timon's uh, from. But um, anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, so okay, so you 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 actually practice <clears throat> law and, and you're barbering. 
Yeah, man. I'm. I'm. I've been doing this for 16 years, and that's what I love. At some point, I was like working already for five or six years at a company. Um, so I was tired of the corporate world and tired of cutting hair, just like hidden from everybody else, like doing it kind of secretly, because I was doing it part time, my free time on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just said, I'm going to quit this shit. I'm, I'm not going to go anymore. I mean, even if this pays good, that's that's not what makes me happy. So I went back to Portugal and decided to open my business. Uh, that was like three years ago. Uh, th so the idea started like two years before that, so five years ago, and it's been three years that we are gaming now. So it's going very well, and I'm I'm very happy we we've done it. That's interesting because you know I had um, I was saying earlier how Tim from Syndicate he came with uh, this barber shop from Mexico uh, called Bravos Bravos Barbershop, and the guy the owner of the shop a fairly young guy too, and he actually. Uh, was like a graphic designer, or industrial engineer designer. He had also been barbering since he was a teenager at home. He left his career because you left a career. I mean, it's not a it's not a job like right. you know. I'm gonna go work at it's Walmart. Real. You know what I mean? It, it's like a career that you studied for. Yeah, I studied like seven years because I did Christ. my masters wow. too much and my degree. But I was cutting <laughs> I was cutting hair for a longer time than I was studying law. So, I mean, the passion for cutting hair was there way before any passion of that's like a lawyer that's there. that's admirable because you know what? And and I told the guys that from Bravos too because. Okay, I don't know how it is in Portugal, but here, like in my city, Whittier, there's tw over 20 barbershops in my city here. Mm. And you could literally, some of them, you can almost walk out of one and almost step into another. That's how close they are. But in your country, is there that many barbershops? Well, there are now. I mean, oh. when we opened, um, there were almost none. I mean, there were like a couple of them and not actually doing anything similar to what we do <coughs> so we kind of were you know transition mm -hmm. mark um yeah that. do you gentlemen want another beer yeah can, can, have Timon, can you, can you uh, right yeah. so he's not just a pretty face <laughs> but barbershops weren't popular when we opened so we opened and i think it kind of inspired a lot of other barbers who suddenly started open more barbershops i think we got more than 50 barbershops that opened the mm -hmm. last three years in, in lisbon wow that many yeah, yeah. but, yeah. but yeah. That a lot, many. A lot. and yeah. johnny here how long have you been barbering johnny so like i joined figaro's in uh august 20, 2014 mm -hmm. so it makes almost three, three years. years wow and uh yeah that's that's it did you like, did you start as a barber or as an apprentice or as an apprentice as See, an apprentice that's cool. yeah yeah it was like was in a i don't know it just happened i w i went there for a haircut twice and fabio just asked me hey do you wanna do you wanna join and be an apprentice and i said okay <laughs> so you own the I shop fabio. yeah i i opened the shop and uh I think when i opened did. i was it was just me and another guy uh two barbers and we had like six chairs already mm -hmm. because the idea was to grow the shop and this this young guy came in um i could definitely feel there was something special about him the first time i didn't talk to him you know he just came mm -hmm. cut his hair and left and like a month later i saw him again coming to the shop and i mean he was just like looking all the time to what we were doing it was abnormal the way he was paying attention to every <laughs> did detail. You say did you say abnormal? Uh, yeah, abnormal. Okay, yeah, that's what. I so yeah. I said, I gotta talk to that guy. I mean, that kid has got something. I don't even he know. Has, how he's old interested, is. right? He, yeah, he's, he's he interested. Wants some of the action, and, then, yeah. and he has like something on his face. Like there's something behind those eyes. He was casing the joint. Yeah, so I said, you're, you're making sure he's not up to no good, right? Hey, kid, you you want to be a barber? Uh, because you know we're gonna start training other guys to join us so and he said hey man i'm i don't know i'm i'm i just gonna i just went to buy my, my <laughs> tattoo kit i was thinking yeah. about being a on the, tattoo on that, artist on that, on that same day i bought my first tattoo kit i was gonna be a tattoo artist and i was like you know <laughs> you know what you're gonna be if you become a tattoo artist you're just gonna be another artist 
besides the thousands of them existing out there, you won't be a good tattoo artist because you won't, <laughs> no I one mean, will teach you as good as I will teach you barbering. You know? <laughs> so you're, you're giving them career counseling, yeah, like yeah. straightforward, like straight look, forward, you're gonna man, suck as a tattoo yeah. artist. Yes, yeah, but forward. I'm the best. I will teach you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, and. I'm glad I did it, and I'm glad I was, <laughs> yeah, uh, I was uh, overconfident that day, yeah. so I could tell him that, you know. You must draw really bad, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, no, actually, does he grab the crayon like I this? <laughs> I actually, actually, I've seen, I've seen some of his drawings. I mean, some of his drawings is, aren't that bad. Yeah, but his haircuts are way better, you know. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of true. tattoos, I think I yeah. see some fresh ink. You, yeah, what, yeah, oh man. yeah. Can you yeah, show yeah. the camera right there? Yeah. Show the camera there. This is what happens yeah, when you party with Tim from yeah. Syndicate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which happened to the guys from uh, bravos too they also got uh, tattooed i think like at midnight or something but um so you guys are here with jimmy you guys went to viva las vegas how was that jimmy oh viva was great it i don't think it could have been any better everything was just it it worked out perfect um we had a great setup great booth um we got quite a few cuts in um mm -hmm. And they were good cuts. I mean, they were good heads. It was a lot of uh, nice hair to work with. It helps, right? It, it, yeah, it didn't really have does. that sharp pay neck, you know, like some people, <laughs> you know, like that guy's face. Yeah. You're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Like, you know, you would think that uh, almost everybody that goes there is already there with a, a fresh haircut, mm -hmm. but uh, we found the guys that needed help, and um, it it turned out really nice. Um. Yeah, I can't say enough for this uh, this trip to Viva. Because they said that, you know what, they said it's been one of the best ones in a while. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know quite a few people. Oh, that, there was a lot of people. A lot of quite, people. A lot of people. Yeah. yeah. They knew we were coming. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, and you said, I got Johnny Hotcakes with me. <laughs> not pancakes, hotcakes. Yeah. <laughs> he could have been a tattooer, but he didn't want to be yeah. like those guys on that show. <laughs> right? Um, so... As far as barbering in Portugal, what do you see as the trends? Oh, you know, before we go there, I want to show, I want to show you guys something. I was looking on the internet, and I happened to find something, and I'm going to show a video. Like I say, if you're listening to the podcast, um, make sure, if I could find where I put it, wouldn't you believe it? Oh, it's right here. Um, I was looking online, and, and I think this is one of the first yeah. times I saw this barber shop. And so if you're listening to the podcast, make sure you watch the vodcast. You can find it on our website, gentlemansavenue.com forward slash lodgecast. And uh, there won't be any any uh, sound, at least for them here, but you guys will be able to see this. So I saw this commercial and I see this guy, David Beckham, right? He's walking in, grabbing some newspaper. And, and I'm assuming, do you guys know anything about this commercial? Oh, I never saw it before. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm surprising you guys. Is how what? It oh is? yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, Johnny Hotcakes here is a <laughs> yeah. surprise. So, what is this, Fabio? Tell, tell us what's going on here. Well, this is a commercial that we were invited to be part of. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the beginning, uh, I'm going to tell you this. We we said no. Mm -hmm. I mean, we ain't got nothing to do with clothing and stuff. You know, like we're barbers. So you, if you want to do a commercial for a straight razor or a clipper or something, I mean, yeah, cool. But we, can, we don't care about clothing and fashion and stuff, you know. Uh, and then they came again and said, hey, you guys got to do this because it's going to be very good for you. It's going to be with a nice guy who's a celebrity. And I said, hold on. I mean, who is who's that person coming here? I said, well, we can't tell you unless you sign some... You know, confidential agreement and stuff. And I said, I ain't signing shit. I need to know who's coming to my <laughs> yeah, show. You're like, I'm, you're like, I'm a lawyer, man. Fuck you, yeah. fuck you guys. Right? I'm so, not gonna sign shit. I'm a big, I'm a big soccer fan, and I've been a fan of David yeah. Beckham ever since I was a kid. So when they told me, yeah, you're gonna have a celebrity here, and I said, who, who works with H and M? That is the Beckham. Oh, so Beckham's coming. I said, all right, cool, we're going to do it, but it's got to be our barbers doing it, no one else. I mean, it's either mm -hmm. our barbers or, or nobody else. So that's the time we had uh, we had the privilege and the honor to meet David Beckham for the first time. Mm -hmm. He became a client. I mean, he's been to our shop a few more times. Um, 
he's an awesome guy actually mm -hmm. he's very humble um very humble and very simple actually for everything he's achieved uh, i think he's a person of very good taste and uh, someone that i'm happy to say he helped us you know by coming to our shop but i can also tell him i can also tell everyone that if you look at all his haircuts in all his life i'm proud to say that probably the best haircut he's ever had is the haircut he got at our shop did you, did you give it to him yeah hell yeah that's what i'm saying you know <laughs> this guy's like if david beckham's gonna have the best haircut it's because yeah. i gave it to him no man it's because we're right? good at what we do <laughs> No, I like, you know, that. that's cool because it's that, you know, because when somebody gets in the chair, uh, and I don't know if, because, you know, Jimmy and I are not barbers. When I get in a chair, a barber chair, I trust my barber that I'm not going to look like an idiot for the next three that's, weeks. That's And that's what you need to do. Like, right? When, when you sit on a chair, we trust you, need you guys. Trust, yeah. Yeah. That you're in so for you to have that confidence to me that's that's what a bar a good barber needs and that's that's why it's important that you know which brands you're working with because mm -hmm. clients will trust you so much that they will buy whatever you tell them exactly exactly so if you're selling them Very shit true. right you don't want them to take home shit that's why you want to have the best stuff at your home at, at your shop so the best pomade and you want to make sure he knows how to use it so i mean this old David Beckham thing, it's its really nice and I really enjoy cutting his hair, but I'm a barber, you know, I like dealing with good hairs. If he comes to my shop with his head almost shaved, I can't give him a good haircut, you know. Mm -hmm. You always need to have like the something hair to, to work, work with. with. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have something to work with. And it was awesome because I met him at the time, he had, he had perfect hair to work with, you know. So, I mean, if I hadn't met him like 10 years ago when he had like, those, the the what do you have those lo those the locks braids, like what's yeah. your name uh, what's red locks or whatever what was it yeah. what was it uh, the chick she had that hair the dreadlocks the braids the braids, uh, the braids the, yeah cornrows uh, no 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 what are they called damn it anyways he did wear that hairstyle yeah. <laughs> that were like cornrow type but the braids yeah 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 no and I, I think you know this commercial everybody it, makes a few bad decisions yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and not everybody has pictures but I I, I, I I like this video because it shows your shop. It showed your shop to a greater audience because if I keep playing it, so there he is, David Beckham, he's in the barber chair. Uh, and then right there we see in the back, there's a chalkboard that says Figaro's, but there's a better shot right there. Yeah. I mean, to me that just showed, and, and that it's a real barber shop. Man. This is, you know, even for somebody like David Beckham or a commercial, it, it didn't, I think it did, you know, justice to the shop. It didn't make it look cheap. It made it look like, see, even somebody who, everybody looks up to the guy, right? Yeah. I mean, unless you hate the guy and you just hate him for no fucking reason, but everybody looks up to him and to see him walk into a shop, even for a commercial, cause you, now that we know the backstory, that you're like, nah, I don't, I don't think so. Did you ask him anything? Did you say, hey man, can we play soccer? I would have been, I would have asked him. Did you ask him? I asked him, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I met him a few more times, you know, mm -hmm. we, we talked mainly about you know family stuff, mm -hmm. like you know children, life in general, like wives and family, and how it is to live in London, how it is to live in LA, football, whatever career. You know, we didn't go that much into hey, what was the best goal you scored? You know, like all these questions that most football fans would ask. Um, we're more into the trivial stuff and more like you know. He's a normal person. Yeah, and, and you know, you should treat people as normal yeah. because that's the celebrities don't like to be treated as celebrities. <clears throat> they like to feel that they are humans. Mm -hmm. And this guy is the kind of guy that likes to feel that he's human. Yeah. For sure, because that's what he is. Because the rest of the time he's a celebrity. The rest yeah. of the time because everybody's... Because people just yeah. put them like over the moon and sometimes these guys like to feel like, well, this guy is just, I'm just like him and he's just like me, you know. With, Normal got feelings we got someday we will pass away you know it's that's life and i think when you meet someone that is this down to earth that has a lot to do with his background his past um and to us it's rewarding that we ended up meeting a celebrity that, it, that is that way you know because mm -hmm. we could have ended up meeting someone that wasn't that cool you know? tom cruise maybe yeah, <laughs> that would have went totally bad. <laughs> and I have a few other pictures here uh, of you guys here. 
So you guys are saying that you're working really hard in Viva, right, Jimmy? You guys we were, hard? we were. I mean, we had fun. I mean, just look at this. This is this is in means of just, having fun. Just to let you know, that was Sunday. That was after work yeah, was okay, finished. Okay. No, oh, we, okay. we have a picture here <laughs> of uh, three fine-looking ladies, yeah. and uh, it says Little Johnny, aka Sad Satan Life. Is yeah. that your handle on social media? Uh, uh, on social media, yeah. yeah. I think Johnny is. Hotcakes is cool. But, um, <laughs> so he, so here cool. he is, right here working um, <clears throat> at Viva. And then here we have oh, there you go. another picture. Cutting hair, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that was a highlight of uh, the day right there. With uh, cutting hair with the real Jimmy Q. Yeah, real nice guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's he's like social media celebrity, right? Yeah, I he mean, did people... not have to come over to our booth. He mm-hmm. didn't have to. I mean, that that's a killer outfit too. I dig it. No, I mean, I I met him the day before mm-hmm. and told him like, "Listen, brother, we we're barbers and we're probably one of the best barbers in the world. We want to give you a haircut." <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like if that. If you know it, uh, let it be known. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and but I told him, "Listen, we're also the most underrated ones." You know, they got, <laughs> no one knows. So he really, them. really got a hair, got to have a haircut. And the guy just. You know, I think he liked us from the beginning, and I told him, "Hey, you want to have this guy coming to your booth? Because I don't care if he has taken pictures to other brands. I don't give a shit, man. You mm-hmm. gotta have him coming to cut hair because he liked us. We're gonna give him a good haircut. He's gonna we're gonna put your pomade on his hair. He's gonna love it. That's mm-hmm. as simple as that. And Timon is gonna photograph. Yeah, I think, and I think there's a picture, happy, right? There's, you know? there's a picture yeah. of him biting the can. Yeah, yeah. That's how good it was. He's like, yeah. okay, I don't even want it in my hair. I want to eat this. <laughs> and I think it was the clay, right? It is, and you know, yeah. when you smell it, you do want to eat it. But I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad idea. I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I got some other pictures here of you guys. Um, you know what? I, I like your shop. What, what's your shop? Where is it located? I mean, what what kind of building? Because oh. it looks old. It looks yeah. It, it, what is it? He you couldn't it? fake that. It doesn't. No, you know. I know. Yeah, you couldn't uh, import that. No. In other words, it, it it wasn't like that, right? When I first saw this building, it was just an empty space. Mm-hmm. I mean, the floor, the tiles weren't there. So everything has been designed and decorated uh, by me and with the help of friends. But this used to be a, a car garage back in the seventies, and it worked also as. Um, I think where they used to make coal out of it uh, back in the 50s or the 60s. So it has been a bunch of different stuff, but never a barbershop before. So you mean like it was a garage where people fix cars, right? Like no, a they sold cars. It, well, it was they a used car to sell yeah. cars. The thing, car yeah. dealer, they used to sell cars like the convertible cars back in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Then it turned into a coolery, I think, where they, they used to have like something to do with coal. Um, and later on it has been just some guy selling towels and eventually the business went wrong so they closed like he only can sell so many towels you get you have one and i saw this place he had a lot of space to sell towels it looked it looked (laughs) it it looked kind of cool like i liked it but it was all you know but that arch was there, I mean, or did you add the that? Arch, oh, the, the arch was there. The architecture, the basics, the, the, the structure. You know, I actually didn't touch the walls. I let them, you know, as they are. I just put some structure to hold the arch so it doesn't fall. Um, some some polish on it, and then the whole floor has been done by us, uh, such as the old, art, the old decoration, so all the, mm-hmm. the cabinets and the workstations you see. Uh, but I mean, you gotta be there to actually fill it. No, I mean, it was hard. I, 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 I mean, we are, we are, we are here. Very hard to get. We are here for three weeks now, and we already <clears throat> miss being at that place because it's so like unique to filling. When oh, you get when, there. You, when you when you enter that shop, is I don't know. We have two shops now. We have the our second shop like quite near to like ten minutes walk, but I don't know this shop. When you enter this shop, you you feel something like mm-hmm. it's totally different. So when you were standing there, what 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 were what were you doing? I mean, were you just were you admiring it when you were looking here at Fabio? I mean, you're looking at the shop, you know, what was going through your head? I don't know. I just I just liked it. I don't know. I just went there and I said, yeah, I want to get my haircut here. And actually, I passed there the day before and they were closed. And I said, okay. It's not gonna be today. I'm gonna try to come tomorrow, and I did happily. 
So yeah. Fabio, what, 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 what Johnny that? Johnny used to be this kind of guy that he would go for anything that was new in town like uh-huh. to try you know like the big fan boy <laughs> throwing you under the bus so he oh, saw yeah. that <laughs> I saw him ready to say something so he saw that a new shop a new shop was open in downtown and oh, he man. gotta try it you know because I mean that's what youngsters do when they got a little bit of spare money you know like, do you have skinny jeans Johnny <laughs> I have he used to I have a lot of skinny long, jeans so <laughs> right. oh man I and he, he had a long hair man had, he was like had, uh, <laughs> all into <laughs> grunge music and Nirvana he was what? a big Kurt Cobain had, and Pearl Jam I, fan I he to still be like, is yeah. so he had like long hair wow. like, I had my pulling, yeah, pulling, I had, he's I had my hair like this I had my hair like this Wow, Crazy. Was, but was he staring? It looked too, so bad. Was he at least inside <laughs> the shop, or was he outside no, looking no, at the he, window? He was he outside like, looking like, at the like, windows. Like, <laughs> no, he, he, I think the first time he came, he waited for like two hours oh, because yeah. we don't do what we don't do uh, appointments. We work walk-ins. Walk-ins only. Um, so we waited for like two or three hours the first time. So I got enough the, time to look yeah. at this guy, you know, when he was waiting. Yeah, yeah, he was. He had found his calling. Yeah, because yeah. we were like only two two barbers working. We had like ten people waiting at that time, you know. Mm-hmm. And you see, uh, like, it took some time. Yeah, it took some time. But clients like, like waiting, they they get s- different reactions. They some go outside for smoke, some just hang inside. Oh, and, when, and when you're and there cutting, well, you know, you know, you know yeah, the, the you can see everything. Yeah. So when Johnny, what what was the vibe? I mean, what was the thing that made you? really like it besides the shop obviously it looks amazing and we can't even see the entire shop in the shot but what was it like i mean what did it feel like to just feel what explain what did it, what what drew you to the shop i don't know like i entered the shop uh the guys give me a beer and that's the first thing okay i'm good so it was the beer yeah and you were 16 that's, and i was 16 <laughs> and I was what's 16. the legal what's yeah. the legal aging uh, the age to drink in portugal we're 15 15 <laughs> we'd say <laughs> don't right. do math people right. do not yeah. do the math <laughs> 15 or 14 when you want. Uh, <laughs> yeah 15 under okay. you can drink. so you'd been drinking for a year now so um <laughs> So you had a good liver here. Um, that was just the legal limit. I'm thinking he started before the legal limit. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so what, 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 did, what, what drew you to the shop, man? Was What was it? You you look in the shop, you're, you're waiting to get a haircut. What, what was it? I mean, what, what made you just go, man, this is the tattoo kit's going in the garbage or under my oh, bed or whatever? At, at, at the time, at the time, like, at the first time, I didn't think even think about it. At the second time, yeah. The second time was when Fabio said, "Yeah, do you wanna do you wanna be a barber?" And that was the day I bought the tattoo kit, and and I said, <laughs> "Okay, uh, I'm gonna try. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep on doing these two things, and then I'll choose." But from the first day I went there, like it totally changed. I I don't know. I I think the tattoo the tattoo kit just just stay there and still stays there in the in the closet because all i know now is the cheers and the yeah so that's the vibe the i mean the, the vibe is i know it, it just it just know, happens he, he was like, still he was still in high school when he came so i told him hey kid you you can come like two days a week just practice in the afternoon and every saturday you can come watch his work mm-hmm. You will learn a lot just from watching, you know. So we did that for like six months. He was coming like every Monday and Tuesday, and then again on Saturday. And the rest of the days he was busy with school. So when he finished his school, I was a bit like, uh, is he gonna come now every day? Or is he gonna tell me like, oh, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna go do some other shit. So I was a bit nervous, like, yeah, you know, managing human resources is, difficult yeah. you know people are evil these days <laughs> and i'm happy that he that's just, why i do this alone he just has the name sad satin because he's not he's not evil uh so you know i i think i'm i'm so happy that i met this kid and i'm so happy that i i could bring him to this level and i'm so happy that he's he's here in the states with me and that he, we made all this journey together i know i'll be his friend forever you know and i know I can trust him so that means the world to me and i know if i got him behind me uh he will have me behind him too so it it works it works very well and we're we're very happy we, we work kind of kind of good and we are happy to inspire other barbers as well and being here in the states 
uh, it's just like, you know, being where we should be at this time mm -hmm. and doing what we love the most together with someone that we found luckily and it's a really good hearted person and has a business that I think he's doing pretty well given all the circumstances and all the fact that he, you know, he has a job, he has his family, he's not a barber. So everything he's doing is brilliant. And we're happy to, to be here and partner up with him and help him anyhow we can. So coming to the States has been a privilege to us and we don't see it as work, but as, you know, building friendship <coughs> and a good relationship <coughs> with people. Because mm -hmm. barbering is about people, right? Yeah, at the end of the day, that's the thing is, is of more barbers understood that each person that walks in the door, whether it's their their friend or client for years, that's how they make their livelihood, is through what you produce. It's how you feel when you walk in the door. There are shops I've been in, and, and people, some, a lot of people don't know who I am, and when I walk into a shop, and I don't go in there like, oh, look, I fucking publish you know, barber magazines, I do this, I know all these great, I go in just like a normal person, and I've been in some where I'm like, God, I just, this is the worst. They didn't even say hello. They didn't even nothing. They're like, you feel like a, a bug on the freaking wall that they want to smash. And you're just like, because people do when they get in the chair. Uh, there was a, uh, there's a barbershop out in Ireland, Dublin, Ireland, uh, run by Liam Finnegan. And this guy's been, he's a, he's. Yeah, I know him. Okay. I know him. Yeah. So he says that. It's Waldorf. Yeah. Waldorf Barbershop that when they sit in the chair it equalizes everybody whether he's cut frank sinatra's hair he's cut the rolling stones hair when oh. they sit down <clears throat> everybody's the same yeah and that's like you're saying earlier about david beckham everybody sits there and they're trusting that guy behind the chair or woman nowadays behind the chair to not make them look like an ass because yeah. when you when you when you do research has shown when you feel good when you look good man you feel good so when you sure. walk out and they trust, like you said earlier, about the product you use, sometimes guys go, yeah, I, what did you just put in my hair? Because I look so fucking good, I want what you put in my hair. And for you guys and for Jimmy, I mean, it's good what, to see that you guys are doing this because you guys are doing a tour here, right? So you're cutting hair and you're doing a, a, is it like demonstrations, right? Yeah. So you guys have yep. been where? Where have you been to do these demonstrations? We were in... Uh so far in Phoenix and San Diego. Mm -hmm. So today we are in LA. We got a show today in, in LA this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And next Sunday we'll be in San Francisco. So hopefully this goes to the air. I mean, goes in the air before Sunday. We also did some cutting at uh, Bike Week. Yeah, and Bike Week. Bike week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's great. laughs> in Phoenix. That was an adventure. <laughs> and you know, getting them to we, get the we, hair, yeah. we like, we, we were at, down to Syndicate Barbershop also to meet the guys. I mean, we like just to pop up in, in shops, meet the barbers, shake hands mm -hmm. with them, see how they work. And, you know, let me tell you this, to be very honest, barbering is is about taking care of people and a lot of barbers don't know what they carry, uh, you know, on their back. But there's a legacy and history on this, on this craft, which goes back more than a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And, Back in the days, more than 100 years ago, barbers used to take care of people just the same way as doctors do today, mm -hmm. as dentists do today. So they were the first surgeons and they were the first, you know, doctors. They were the first guys giving bath to people who had no water at home. So what they did for people was everything that you can combine today with hospitals, clinics, uh, spas, all together, that's what barbers used to do. Mm -hmm. Today, it all resumes to haircuts and shaves, but still, that is taking care of people. Mm -hmm. And what makes me upset is that I come into the States and I see that hair designs, modern barbering, modern hairdressing is the trend. So I'm not in a war against these people, but I certainly don't like to you know, go ahead, Jimmy. Drink up. We have plenty of beer, so go I ahead certainly, I, I certainly don't like coming to the U.S. and thinking that the school that I practice at home no longer exists in the same proportion 
as other schools are emerging in the states mm -hmm. and if you look to all the american famous celebrities and actors that actually made you guys famous in europe and asia al pacino robert de niro brad pitt george clooney i mean you never saw these guys with hair designs they would look totally ridiculous people <laughs> right. would make fun of yeah. them and That's people true. don't think that way because barbering is not about making you look good as a barber and as an artist is about the client looking good and confident and giving him the best haircut not to give him some hair design shit that will make him look full it's not to make you look so like how are how are parole over here our way of saying things and seeing things has been like hey we're barbers I mean, hair design things with the things you do on YouTube that looks cool for the pictures and for the video, that just makes you look cool, but it makes the client look like an asshole after two days. Yeah, exactly, because yeah. it starts growing back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So people don't get it, you know? It's not all about a picture. It's about, you know, this guy's gonna carry a haircut for the next three, I, you four know what weeks. I don't get yeah. And that should look good on him and should make him happy. Have you, have you seen when they do the airbrushing? <clears throat> they airbrush onto the hair, like face, you know, like they'll cut. Mm -hmm. oh, and I, oh, I get what you're saying. And, and Johnny did a back, uh, a Batman symbol in my chest hair last night. Did you really, Johnny? Oh, yeah. He, he can do it. He just chooses not to. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I got some lower back hair here that might, that could have some. Uh, but I think, like you're saying, and a matter of fact, the barber shops originated in Europe. They originated in Europe. The Greek and the Romans are the first to have these celebrated, and they were celebrated. It was a place yeah, for men. For men to be. Actually, the Egyptians were the first barbers, and then the yeah. Greeks and the Romans, you know, made turned the barbershops into parlors where men would come and discuss politics <clears throat> and stuff, and also the issues that were going on in, the, in their yeah, community. Yeah, because in, in the Egyptians, they were still doing it on the corners. Yeah. They, they were still out there, right? You could do it under a tree. Yeah. for thousands of years. I mean, you're talking uh, right now, it'd be what, 55, 6,500 years ago, documentation. But you of, know what? If you ask this to any barber in the US, they won't know. I mean, most barbers yeah. won't know about well, this. Well, you know, they will if they buy my DVD coming out next week, uh, next month. But uh, we filmed that. Uh, my brother Danny uh, Becerra is here from uh, Gentleman's Part of Barber Shop out in San Jacinto. We filmed and I interviewed uh, an Egyptologist and uh, he was in London. I interviewed him via Skype and I included it because they have found in in pharaoh's tombs in king tut there's a straight razor it doesn't look like our straight razor but it's a razor buried with them the barbers were buried around the tomb not in the tomb with the pharaoh because you know they were killed right when the pharaoh died his yeah. barber was killed because in the afterlife he wanted to look good and you're talking a barber when you when you cut when you stay went, not too close to David Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put it. Okay, okay, okay well, check this out. The, the, you the, won't you won't be dying. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm positive. You're like can I have a mausoleum next door? But because when they were cutting the pharaoh, it was like cutting a god, because the pharaohs were gods to them. Exactly. So imagine being the royal barber, and a matter of fact, the symbol, the hieroglyph, was a razor. Well, they, this is more like a spatula, but it was a razor that they used. That was the symbol for the word barbering and anyways but so it is a secret it is sacred and so i mean for you to see here in the u.s and you know what it's it's funny because every day people think about technology but there will never be a machine that can replace men hands at this craft so there will never be a machine doing everything it will always you know the barber will always be needed the skill the skill yeah the skill the you know the craftsman and the knowledge the know-how that's something that it can, it's unreplaceable mm -hmm. and i think that's something that we as barbers are very proud because we're not competing against machines in the future i mean you see you go to the airport you see less and less people working at the check-in desks because it's everything automatic today so they're replacing people for machines um and what you see today is that more and more businesses are replacing, you know, they don't want to pay people, they just want to put a machine over there. But that's something you know that it won't happen at barbering. Well, what do you think? I, I, I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's the self-cut system. And I don't mean to knock oh, it. I don't, I don't, know, if, I don't know if that's trademark or anything, but uh, God bless you guys and your product. Um, it, it's right. It's this bunch of mirrors mm -hmm. and with, with these lights so you can cut. 
your own hair. And, 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 and I think it's, people have a hard enough time combing their I hair. I think it yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> you know, do you know those machines that were popular in the Floby. 90s? The that Floby. You, could, you yeah. could do your abs at home. Or the, uh, <laughs> the ab master. It's, abs of steel. It's the same. I mean, if you don't go run out there and go to the gym, you won't get any abs. And if you don't make a good diet. I mean, I still have a couple j- uh, shake weights. And <laughs> they do not work. How do they work, Jimmy? Can you show <laughs> they, us on They screen? work like this. <laughs> 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 but... <laughs> But I think it's part of it. Barbering, barbering is, especially for me as a, as a patron, because I don't look at myself as just a client. You know, when I sit in the chair and I go to American Vintage Barbershop up here in um, in Whittier and Uptown, my barber, uh, unfortunately, my the barber that used to cut my hair, he passed away um, about a little over a year ago. And it was hard for me to switch. Oh. It was hard for me to switch to another barber in the shop. And the guy who cuts my hair now, it's I enjoy it, man. I just go. You know, he, what do you want? Usual, okay, boom, takes care of me. We talk bullshit, talk about family, life. We don't sit there and just talk, oh yeah, well I'm doing this and I know that, you know, it's not business. It's, it's about it's about going to the barbershop, not just having a haircut. Oh yeah, they have walk in, hey, you want a water, you want a beer? You know, it's, and I think if people realize that, but then the barber and the owner are the ones that set the vibe. I mean, if you have like a total douchebag barber or the owner man you, you don't you you want to get out of there really fast you know it's not yeah. home yeah they say man has three places in life you have your work you have your family you have your home and then the barbering the barbershop should be your third place yeah where you go and you can bullshit you can just and you can be free there i think exactly yeah. you can be free and i think every man deserves that because i mean we don't get less and less we get like men privilege mm-hmm. so i think the society worldwide is kind of twisted towards women rights and it's fine you know because they've been unprotected for so long mm-hmm. but it also feels good that barbershops are kind of the last you know saviors of the men's traditions so it's kind of good to have a place where we feel like men and I think if you if you look back, I mean, who who actually has this close proximity with men? Mm-hmm. The doctors, who else? Tailors, yeah. dentists, you know. But barbers are the ones that actually take more of an advantage because when you go to the doctor, you probably are on pain. You know, you're yeah. in pain, or when you have something on your, your you don't want to be there you, 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 you don't want to be there, there. Right. You don't be be at there. The there might be some yeah. 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 <laughs> when you go to a tailor even though he's like touching you and measuring you he's, he can also stitch you with a, you know mm-hmm. it's not comfortable you're not sitting yeah, yeah. at the barber chair it's where you sit and relax you know and I look at people in this world and I there's like two kinds of people there's those who know about good haircuts and there's everybody else mm-hmm. right and I'm happy to be part of those. And I try to bring as many as possible to this side, you know, to make them understand what a good haircut is. Because that's our way of looking at people. Mm-hmm. This guy knows about what a good haircut is, and those, they don't. And Because barbering is intimate. It is probably one of the most intimate moments a man has on a regular basis. It's intimate. And then you're paying, right? You're paying for that. You know, I enjoy the massage, man. I mean, just, yeah, you know, you don't enjoy it too much, but you know, you, yeah. you enjoy it. Uh, you know, it feels good, but it, it's because it defines who we are. Our hair is the one thing. Oh, when, that, you, look, when you look at someone, you're going to look at the hair for exactly. sure. And it tells you who they are, what their personality is. It, and we can change it over and over and over. Or some barber can totally fuck it up. Yeah, I think hair and shoes hair really and tell shoes. you a lot about a person. They speak louder yeah. than any word will ever speak. Me? Yeah, because they're... I'm wearing they're... triggered bo- vans. I'm here to party. Okay, yeah. They're, they're <laughs> like... <laughs> wearing vans. They like at the edges, right? Mm-hmm. So you see, you are everything that lies within. Mm. But because eyes lay on top, hair will always come first in the shoes. High level, yeah. High level. It's within the periphery. Yeah. And that's why even what you put in your hair. I mean, you know? if you look back and you see James Dean, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, I mean, even if their face was all like fucked up, their hair would still look good. It was mm-hmm. all about the hair. 
that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also what you put in your hair because I know uh, when Shiner Gold came out, uh, when Jimmy brought it out into the marketplace, there hadn't been anything like that. I mean, it really was something, even for me, when, when he sent me a can and I did a review on it, and I've written several times, uh, I think Jimmy says, he swears that I can say his obituary, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'll probably go before him. But um, because it is hard not only to find good barbers, and I think what you guys are doing, and you're, just the way you perceive things is right on. I mean, it's what the world needs. It's not only what Portugal needs and what you guys are doing there. And it's good that Jimmy brought you, you guys are with him doing this tour because they need to hear it here too. Because many people have forgotten. It's not about posting and getting whatever, 100 likes oh. in five minutes or whatever. Or you see who did like it and who did, you know, or how many reposts and shares. Because life doesn't, the real world doesn't exist around social media. No, true. It's between true. speaking to people and looking them in the eyes and them going, okay, that guy's not, you know, whatever, a snake or, which there's a lot of people like. And, but I, I, I totally think what you guys are doing is great. Uh, I admire your guys' shop. I think it's a really cool shop there in uh, Portugal. And for what Jimmy's doing in Arizona and affecting the world because uh, he was able to get you guys here and to work with you guys. And I'm excited to see what you guys have up your sleeves. <clears throat> uh, I know I probably couldn't give Jimmy some more beers to maybe he'll leak it out, but <laughs> 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 maybe Fabio, he might be ready. <laughs> uh, but you guys did bring a, um, a Timon, right? Yeah, we did. Diamond. Is, I, I actually, I actually, earlier I called him Diamond. Diamond, yeah. I did too for the first yeah, everyone two days. Does. Okay, everyone okay. does. He, he, I think Diamond sounds better. Yeah. Cool. He, he is a Diamond, honestly. <laughs> he, he is. He's been working with us for like a couple of years now. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw our documentary, but we got a documentary online, like 17 minutes and a portrait of me and a few other clips. And Diamond has been involved in most of those. So is is the guy who actually can show the world what we do better mm -hmm. okay we got our photographer over there uh who photographs but when it's about filming this is our guy you know mm -hmm. and we're so happy to to have him here with us in the states because i'm sure what what's going to turn out film wise it's going to be great and it will make people want us to see more often in the states and i'm sure jimmy will will be happy also to have time and diamond's work rolling on his um, on his Instagram and on his page. And I'm sure when Jimmy wants to introduce us to someone and hey, this, I'm bringing these guys to the state, he's gonna have something way more structured and better to show mm -hmm. as if it just were random pictures. So I think it makes perfect sense to have time and over here and I'm glad we, we he knows what we want and he's like on the same page as we are when mm -hmm. it comes to like showing barber stuff. So he's a perfect guy to have with us on this trip. And I'm glad that uh, Jimmy understood that and understood the value of that. So we're all rocking a good time and uh, getting ready for something really outstanding. You will, you will Is it the torta? It. Is it the torta we're having <laughs> later? Because uh, I, oh, I, I'm, I, mean, I'm, I told these guys not to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could I could swear I could hear that word coming. We're getting excited for the tortas later. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to end up uh, closing out. But before we do, I do have some gifts for you guys. Um, if anybody's wondering what Diamond looks like, Kind of like uh, Van Damme in the bad years, you know, after all the movies. <laughs> I mean, he's a good looking guy, but. Uh... <laughs> Diamond. Is... <laughs> Diamond. So here's a shirt a from our up. podcast. Jimmy, <laughs> thank I'm, you thank I'm you. hoping that. Uh, oh, thank you, man. I'm assuming. Yeah. Large? Yeah. Yeah, for my muscles. Yeah. 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 Thank That's you, man. our uh, podcast uh, design there. Uh, I got a, guys... I got a similar tattoo. Uh, yeah, but there we go. Yeah. There we go. Can't be can't go wrong with yeah, the butt. Can't go wrong. I got some uh, stickers here from my barber shop for you guys. Thank you, nice. Jimmy. You know Thank American you, Vintage. Man. Good guys. Also, some stickers from a brewery from my hometown. Oh, we love breweries. Yeah, they're. Um, <laughs> we love beer though. They do. You know, this company they do old world yes. style beer, so you can actually age it. We you, got a, we you got can a, age it like wine. We got a fridge back in our shop where we 
you know, just put all the stickers. So this Sorry, these are Jimmy. gonna go straight the, there. These are gonna Thank go straight there. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the brewery in Placentia, California, my hometown. But um, no, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure meeting you guys, and I'm grateful for Jimmy for the years of friendship that we've had, and uh, I know I'll continue to to support you know what, what you do and the, the individuals you're working with and uh anytime you guys are in town or anything i can do for you guys oh, thank you thank you for thank having you. us and hopefully you will hear about the project that we're working on and next next time we're in the states we got some more time to hang out and we'll be we'll be keeping in touch and yeah so you guys on on social media uh, what's your your the name uh, on social it's media figaro's barbershop lisboa that's mm -hmm. like the name of our town so if you just type figures barbershop lisboa it's probably all, will, okay. will pop yeah. up and that's on twitter and instagram or what is it instagram, instagram is the main social network we use mm -hmm. got also facebook and uh, we got our youtube channel where you can see most of the videos Timon has done most well, what's of them. your channel on instagram on youtube uh, figures barbershop okay do you guys have a website we have a website uh, www.figaroslisboa.com. Okay, Jimmy Shiner Gold Pomade, right? Shinergold.com and uh, Instagram is Shiner Gold Pomade. Uh, those are the two I really just uh, spend time with. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'd like to just end it with uh, when I do business with people, it does start out as friendship. You know, mm -hmm. we could have talked about business till you know for for hours, but with all my shops, even my distributor in Switzerland, with uh, my distributors in Malaysia, we're friends and then the business comes. If we become friends and the business doesn't come, mm -hmm. at least we still are friends and um, it it's it's easy. Mm -hmm. It can really be easy. It doesn't have to be as difficult as uh, some people make it. And uh, we're always out to have a good time. And, uh, you know, if you don't try so hard on the business side mm -hmm. which some people say i should probably try a little harder mm -hmm. it comes you know have fun and uh, i'm glad these guys came out we're we're, we're uh, having a great time and uh glad to be with you since 2012 that's how mm -hmm. long we've been together mm -hmm. um it's like a long term yeah long distance, long distance and long relationship <laughs> 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 but, uh, but i appreciate all of you i appreciate all my shops i never had a girlfriend for that long <laughs> <laughs> But. E equal rights, my friend. Equal rights <laughs> in the United States. But uh, we also have Danny Becerra. Danny, can you come on on the, on the set here? Danny's a great guy. Yeah. His guys at his shops, good people. He, Danny's been with me since the beginning. What's happening? Good. He uh, carried Shiner Gold when everybody else was like, what's this stuff? Matter of fact, you entered. You, yeah, I think you turned me on to Danny. I think you told me you're like. Uh, did I send you that that right picture? I I, I, don't, I don't remember. I just <laughs> <laughs> tank top. That was a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, you know what? It, anytime I see skin, man, it gets me going. But uh, yeah, so I mean, you, you turned me on to Danny, and when we've become like family, I mean, uh, we filmed at his shop, 120 years of barbering, and um, you know, we've just had a great relationship. So I'm thankful that you're here for this too and uh we have time over here time and say hello or just peeking over you should here. pop your head in so they can <laughs> yeah. see the, the, the van damn look this alike he's buff <laughs> yeah I mean, i'm waiting for him to whoop on me yeah i've been yeah. messing with him for two like weeks now yeah <laughs> we have time and you're gonna have to duck down a little time yeah. in because there you oh, go man. there we can see you danny get in the shot there a little bit <laughs> so we can see you get in within there you go but there's uh, all the folks we have here with us at the lodge today so uh, i'd like to thank these gentlemen for making the time to see us and uh <laughs> flip off my camera <laughs> and uh, drink some beers and we're going to have some tortas now because oh. it's, it's about lunchtime and I know they have a busy day they're going to be out in uh, Ranch Cucamonga and then uh, they'll be up in San Francisco so make sure you check us out on our website gentlemensavenue.com forward slash the lodge cast subscribe follow uh, we're on iTunes so until next time be well my friends <laughs>